Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I just finished up a reel from Dick in Philadelphia, and Dick likes to, uh, to send me the unusual and the extraordinary, I guess. And um, he sent me an Okuma Titus, uh, which is a lever drag reel. This one's a two-speed reel, and uh, it's in beautiful condition. Uh, when I got inside of it, just found that it was dry. I guess the original oils and the like had uh, probably evaporated and all. That's okay. But I didn't do a video on this one because I have several videos out there on the Titus. And uh, one of them is actually a reel in a bag project that was bringing one back from the dead. But uh, the overall, it's a very nice and smooth reel. If you have the opportunity to find one, well, there you go. And you have it in a two speed and a single speed. That's controlled by pushing the button in. That'll lock the lever into the, the drive mode, and then when you want to return, you simply push the lever in and it pops the button out. But overall, a very nice reel. Well, Dick also sent me one, and I tried to do at least one video of the ones that he sent, and this one, that honestly, is going to be an interesting one. From what I can tell, this reel is not sold in the United States, and uh, it's got these darn uh, little Allen key or Torx uh, side plate screws. There's nothing ever easy with these reels. And uh, this one was made in Mexico. I went to try and find the schematic on it. I could not. Overall, it seems to be a nice reel. It's a bait feeding mode. It's a big reel. It's an 80 size bait feeder. And we're going to do our best that we can to try and uh, get underneath this one, uh, show you how to take it apart, how the reel is made, and uh, how to service it. So uh, here we go. I'm going to start by removing the exterior pieces. I have a, uh, a, a bit set here that has a whole bunch of these types of bits. We're going to see if we can line one up here that's going to work with the side plate. Okay, well this one's going to be a patience tester and uh, we'll do our best. Uh, I think we said at one point in time or another that uh, when I first started out doing this stuff, one of my friends told me uh, what you need for, to be successful in real repair is a whole lot of patience and some self-humor. Well, he's right. Here's three different screw sizes that are micro screwdriver pieces. And uh, we're going to start by taking these out. I probably should have removed the handle first, but we're going to just leave these as it is. And we're going to move down. This is kind of flying by the seat of your pants because, well, can't get the schematic in the US and I don't know this says made in Mexico not sure if that's the case or not but we're using a whole bunch of it looks like Allen heads here and we're just kind of going based on what we know from uh, prior experiences working on bait feeders this is another reason why people don't like working on bait feeders there's so many of them, they're relatively intricate, they take a lot of time, and well, among other things, sometimes they don't go according to plan. So we'll uh, do our best. I'm keeping my screws and I'm keeping the bits along with them in the parts tray. That way I kind of know which ones are which. Of course, the two screws that are on the side here are the same thread size but different. Why would they make them the same? The one with the broader head goes up top. And then this one, yet another bit, goes below. Alright, got that done. Let's see if we can't uh, remove the handle. This looks to be a screw in handle. Assuming this nut here well, we'll see take the little clip off I don't know if this side has to be removed or not I guess we can try to keep as much of this together as I can <coughs> So if you like uh, exploring how fishing reels are made, this may be the channel for you. And uh, 
if I haven't mentioned it already, if you would like to subscribe, that'll always tell you a little bit about how the real uh, that I'm working on or showing up on YouTube, and you can choose to watch them. I got started on this. This is a little rubber cap that just gets removed, and now you can slip your guard over. And this is a little bit, let's just call it interesting at the moment. We're missing a screw here. Well, I don't know if we're missing it. That may be the one from uh, the side plate that I just took out there. But this, overall, you would generally like to see side plate on side plate. This doesn't have that. I'm not sure if that's weep holes or why, but I guess we'll find out. And of course we have one more <coughs> different screw here to complete the, uh, the takeoff of this portion of the side plate. Now I'm just going to back this off a little bit because we, uh, we need to remove the rotor before we can access the side plate piece. Those of you wondering what's happening to my voice, I'm just coming back off of a cold, so I do apologize if I sound raspy, hoarse, or maybe even weak voiced. That's uh, not by intention. We have two uh, little shim washers here that control the spool height. You want to pull them up. Actually, it feels like three. I'll put those into the side of my parts tray. Keep the spool off to the side for a moment. We're going to remove the hold down for the rotor assembly. Nut. Again, find another little spot in your box for that. Then I think this is probably a 14. This comes off in the reverse thread. So you turn that to the right or clockwise to remove it. Turn it away from you. That goes into my box and we should be able to pull up and remove the rotor. And now we should have access to the case. Well, to do that we have to take the three screws that are holding the tie down here off. The more tools on my bench, I don't I don't understand that, and I always wonder from the folks that are designing these reels how this can be efficiently manufactured. I mean, this is the fourth or the fifth type of uh, screw on here now. I just don't get it. I think the message is they don't want you working on your fishing reel or they're going to do the most they can to prevent you from doing that. And again, there's no schematic that I'm aware of for this. I haven't found it. I saw Safina, but not Selena in the uh, Okumas. Those three are the same. I'll pull a bump guard up now. Find another home for that in my parts tray. Make sure that those three screws go in there. It's a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way because if you're not taking pictures, boy, you're in for a lot of fun. Here's one of the examples of that. We have a little screw here, or a spring here, that's on the anti-reverse override to this. And uh, you better know that that belongs there when you go to remove your anti-reverse assembly. Here's one more. It's holding your side plate on. And then I'm not quite sure what's going on with that nut on the main gear. But I do know that uh, I want to remove this before I do anything more. Just to check to see what might be in here. I don't know if I can remove the other side yet. Well, it just looks like a straight up stud. I don't think I need to do anything with that. <coughs> All right, well, I just was able to find the screw, so we'll just uh, see if we can't back this off. Now, if you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're just trying to figure it out, 
and if you want to uh, leave those questions in the comment section I will try to answer them for you I still got this one screw here that I partially started to take off before I realized I had to remove the the rest of the assembly here so you see I'm taking pictures along the way that's important particularly if you're working on a reel where you don't have the schematics as a guideline uh, to help you along with that all right let's see what happens now we should be able to remove this case And this is showing us what's inside. Well, what's inside is uh, pretty typical of a bait feeder. It's got a lot of old uh, dried and dirty grease in there, so we're going to try and clean that out as best we can. It's a metal plated case. I just used a little bit of uh, penetrating oil to clean that size up. So the metal cases, the advantage of it is it's rigid. The disadvantage is the weight. But if you're fighting a, uh, a big fish, and this is built for big fish, you won't get the flex that you will get in a graphite uh, case to reel. Take pictures along the way. That way if you have one of those oh no moments, at least you can pretty much Take a look at it, make sure that uh, you have a reference point back there. All right, we've cleaned up the side plate. You may or may not choose to just push this out of the side to remove the, uh, the main gear assembly, or you can uh, push it down. I'm going to rotate now. You can see the old grease is in here, right? It's all kind of chocolate colored. All of that uh, needs to be cleaned up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down so that I have access to the little shoulder clip here. It's a double C clip. And you just walk it over the back of the assembly. I use a little pick to do that. Bring that up. And then you can remove that simply by pulling out. It's a double clipped C. That goes into my parts tray. Now you can take the axle shaft out and again you can just see that there's all kinds of dirt and debris in this one so I don't know where or when or how this reel's been fished I just know that well, we've got some dirty parts in there. You got two things going here here's your trip notice that it goes over that cross wind block so without I try to least uh, disturb these things as possible so in this case I'm going to try and work around that by removing the cross wind block up at the top cycle. I'm also going to try and leave this in place by pulling down so that I can remove the main gear. Just was checking before I go and do anything odd. Well, one of the things you notice is you have an elliptical gear here. That's not a round gear, it's an elliptical. You have a reference mark on the elliptical gear right here. And you should have a reference somewhere on the gear here. There it is. Hard to see, but there is a red dot on the side here. I don't know if you can see that in the picture. There's a red dot here, which needs to align with the groove in the elliptical here. If you don't do that, you're not going to have the operation run properly. All right, I'm going to remove that off the side again. I want to leave this as attached as I can before I, I go any further. I want to remove my elliptical gear now. take care of that before I go up top to service the rest of this. This overall, this, uh, this main gear is in good condition. It's just uh, dry. So we're seeing a lot of that here. Kind of running out of parts. 
places. All right, the elliptical gear is held on by a screw. It's worth noting that the point where you need to install the main gear backside of this is opposite the stud. So with the stud all the way down, the other piece will be up. All right, and then I just need a pliers here. Again, another good place to take a picture. I'm never quite sure. For example, underneath here, we just noticed that there is a plastic piece that belongs, I guess, inside the oscillation gear. And then it has a set of prongs that face up. So that's going to mount this way, I assume. And we're going to take that need a double tray. This may be the first time I've needed a double tray for parts. Take that and put those together in another tray. And now I can come up top here. And again, the uh, couple of things going on here. Notice that there is a clip that's about ready to fly here on the instant anti-reverse override. We have the spring which is holding this assembly in, so that needs to come off. Be careful with that. This one is never easy. Hold the spring because you don't want to shoot it. You can walk that up the post. I'm just going to leave that on here now. So there's a V clip. You see it just keeps wanting to come out. It's held in place by the case. Make sure that you do that. All right, we should be able to lift this whole assembly out now. And this one has the traditional old style roller bearings in it, so always fun with that. Okay, it took me a couple of minutes, but I have removed the pinion, the collar, the two clips, and I have reinstalled the little carrier holder on that side. What you want to do on your pinion gears, you want to make sure it's free and clear of debris. To do that, I like to use a little bit of penetrating oil to loosen whatever greases are in there. And then I use a brush to pull that out. You can use any kind of brush. You can use a wire brush. I prefer a soft bristle brush in this one. You can use a toothbrush if you like. Just make sure that the channels are clear. Inspect the channels to make sure that they are all crisp, that they're not uh, broken or bruised or, or in any way misshapen. And then go ahead and load that back up with once you've finished the greasing of that, let's put that sleeve back on. And then that sleeve gets inserted through and up through the bearing. And that's your assembly as we took that off. Okay, time to carefully reassemble then. We have our pinion gear. We have the other pieces. And here's your piece that you need to load in. So what you want to do is aim for that override. Make sure that your case sets properly. Okay, that took a whole lot longer than I had hoped it would, but uh, we're done. We've got it flush to the case, blurring on top, the pinion gear through, cleaned and serviced. Haven't lost any pieces and parts. We, uh, we managed to reconnect here. Let's go back and reconnect the rest of this then. We have the, the main bearing. <coughs> Make sure we get a good amount of grease on that. Grease on the back side here. We've got our oscillation gear. And again, this is an elliptical. That was kind of the selling point for a while there. I don't know how many more of these or, or how much of these are, are used today. But at the time, it was a selling point. You'll notice I took my glove off. I kind of wish I had it back on here, but uh, we were using that uh, when I was setting that bearing. But again, we can put this behind it. This, that's going to play with me here. After you've set that, go ahead and get your tie-down screw. 
sure that gets in there nice and easy. And again, the, the trick to the next part here is going to be that we want to line the red dot that's here, right on that stud there. You want to line that with the arrow for the base there. So we've oiled both of the bearings. Let's get a good group of the greases here. Get them on the back too. And you need to, to do two things here. You need to look for your red dot. Remember, we left this in intact, so you're going to need to pull that down, find the red dot, merge it all in, now I'm in. And one way to, to check this before you go much further, if you're not in properly, it's going to hang. So what you want to do is make a complete rev revolution here, making sure that you have the piece completely set. That's that piece. Before I go any further, I do want to check the status of the drag system down below. That's held in by a clip. You can pull the clip and the whole assembly will come out and I guess we have our answer as to why everything on the shaft is dirty. That's because everything in the drag system is dirty. So just remove your clip. There's a spring. And then we have this assembly that should screw out. And there's quite a bit of dirt and grease and like in there. Let's get rid of all of that. So I don't know how that got in there, but it did. Let's get it out of there. Yeah, we've got all kinds of sand and, and the like in here. It's probably been impeding the operation of that back back drag there. So reels tell interesting stories, and I'd like to know the, the story behind this one. And again, one of the problems is that this reel is not sold in the U.S. And I don't know where. It says made in Mexico, or at least it was made, it was sent from Mexico. All right, well, that's going to help. So the good news is, I think, is just it's the carrier. The, uh, the drag washers up above look okay. Reseat the spring. Reseat the carrier. Bring that back in here. You're going to find the two holes for this. Once you bring that in, you can reinstall the clip. And that will hold your drag down. Okay, wow. So we've pretty much got it all except that we haven't put the crosswind block in. We can do that now. Bring your crosswind block down. Make sure you get some grease on the inside of it. And remember that the point goes to the outside. You should be able to slip it under that bar, top of the stud, and then move it into place. 
Next up then is your axle shaft. Bring our axle shaft down and through, through your cross wind block into your rear drag and make sure that you have the slot for the double sided C-clip in place. And any one of a number of screwdrivers that we've used throughout this project. Now we can put the plate back on, find the opening on that plate. There's also a stud over here that's going to sit inside of an, a piece here. Just kind of aim it. Okay, just finished tightening up that last one. That's our cover. Now we can take our rotor, set our rotor back on there. We have that rotor nut. Remember, this was a reverse thread, so it's going to come back on reverse threaded or, if you will, turning towards you. I like to do this by hand because I don't want to risk cross threading it. So let's, uh, let's give this a tightening down here. That should be good. And then we should have one more screw under here before we go to the exterior screws. Oh, I'll put that tie down in place too. Wow, well I apologize for the length of this one. This one is a wrestling match. And again, half of it has to do with so many different tools. The other part of it has to do with lack of support in terms of a schematic, which is going to make it you want to be a little bit more conservative in your approach if you uh, need to take the pictures and the other pieces of it to make sure that it's working properly. All right, that's on. Now we have the nut that's holding the handle. And again, this was reverse threaded as well. This is just the extended axle shaft here. Very interesting design. Again, I don't know on the manufacturing lines how they do this. It always amazes me when it's not a crisp and easy assembly of a reel. Okay, that should be it there. Tighten that down. Put the cap on the other side here. Now we should be able to get back to doing the other piece here. And grab our bump guard next. sure that that installs easily and I think I'm seeing probably why the water got in there this bump guard just doesn't uh, doesn't snug up very well there okay back to our assemblage of screws here the bigger one went here Okay, then we have the tie down between the two. The big headed one goes above. And the smaller one below. off 
off the table. We have our little rubber boot that goes over the top of the star adjuster. These are always tough later on. Right now it's okay, but later on when these things start to dry out, they always chip and crack and become problematic. Moving right up the scheme of things here, we have our spool height adjuster. All right, gee, that took a while. All right, one more thing. Holy moly, this one's been taking a while, right? Let's get the little guard out of there. Take our spring clip out. Check our drag washer system. We have felt drag washers in here. And this one's been pressed down pretty good. I don't know why it would not surprise me. I don't even know if we can get this one out. First thing we want to do is clean all of that stuff that was holding it in place. We've got felt washers, just make sure they're not torn. It goes felt washer starts at a good healthy drink of oils. Alright, so I've just finished loading the last of them. So it goes the two round washers with the eared washer in the middle. The felt washers get oiled. Put that retention clip back in here. We're almost ready to test this darn thing. Boy, it's been a little bit of a battle. All right, the little clip goes in both recesses. Just like that. Should be able to grab our adjuster nut now. Tighten that down. Before we leave this, we want to oil our roller. Oil the slots on the bale and just give it a quick flip to make sure that that's working fine. Last part then is just to put the handle back on. And we'll give it a test, see how we did. Again, the big issue with this one is always that you need to know on an elliptical drive how that uh, reference point lines up. If it doesn't line up properly, you're not going to have a good operating reel. Well, there you go. Wow, that's a whole lot smoother than where we started, Dick. No hum or grind or, or the like. Let's go into bait feeder mode. Doing fine. Let's trip it over. Locks in place. Nice operational rear drag again. This one's ready to go fishing. Well, that's been quite a uh, an episode here. Thank you to everybody who stayed around to watch it. It's been quite a challenge. I think just reinforces why most bait shops don't work on uh, bait feeder fishing reels. They're just, well, let's just call it difficult and leave it at that. But uh, this one's got crazy design in it. Way, way, way too many different types of tools required to do it. Lots of patience in there as well. And uh, the end result is you can service these. And you can uh, keep them fishing for a long time. Uh, just as some additional effort required. So to everybody who's hung around, thank you for doing that. To our first responders and essential personnel. I appreciate everything you do to keep us safe during the pandemic. Seems like it's back again. And uh, to all who uh, are here, please stay safe, stay well, stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.